Hi, my name is Becca Jarrett, um, and I wish I could stand up here and give you a really coherent, profound narrative on what community and trust mean to me. On paper, this is a theme I really should have down, as there is really no other vehicle through which I could have learned these two things than my five years here at the University of Virginia. However, this is a night that is animated by candidness and vulnerability. So I come to you humbly with a story that is admittedly a little bit messy and very much so ongoing. As some of you may know, I've played soccer here for the last five years. The last two of those five years went in a direction I probably would not have predicted when I committed here at 16 years old. I tore my ACL meniscus twice. I have many scars here to prove it. Um, and that was an experience that I truly, like I said, could have never predicted. I went from feeling like I was on top of the world and I could do anything to being helpless. It was in a practice the night before one of the biggest games on our regular season schedule. I was doing something I'd done a million times before. There was no contact, nothing out of the ordinary, and all of a sudden, it had happened. Now, excuse me for being a little bit graphic, but unfortunately, an ACL injury is very specific and very recognizable to female soccer players. The sound, the way the person hits the ground, the way they scream, unfortunately, you just know what it is when you see it. So the second I hit the ground, I knew what I had done. Now, again, I don't remember much what happened from the second I hit the ground to waking up after surgery, but I do know one thing. Eight days had passed in that time, and it was all a blur. I know I got a lot of texts, I shed a lot of tears, and I ordered a lot of DoorDash. Everything else, I can't tell you much. The next concrete memory I have was being in a hotel room two days after my surgery with my mom. I was laying in bed, my leg was wrapped from my hip to my ankle, and I was dazing in and out of sleep. I was probably a little bit high too, but we don't have to talk about that. The TV was playing in the hotel room, and all of a sudden I realized that they were talking about me. It was the local news. My team had played Penn State that night, and there was an interview clip of my coach, who's sitting right there, who was describing me, my personality, and my presence as a teammate. And all of a sudden, in that moment, I realized this is my reality. The next six weeks, I would be on crutches due to my meniscal tear. I wouldn't be able to drive. I wouldn't be able to hold anything and walk at the same time. So I would need a lot of help. Suddenly, I went from being super independent, super self-sufficient, to entirely reliant on the people around me. I would never been in a position like that in my life, and I was very afraid. Eventually, I realized that it was okay. It was okay to be vulnerable, and it was okay to ask for help. I'm not quite sure how I got there, but over time, I learned a way that worked for me. I learned how to ask for help from my friends. I learned how to say I needed things when I really did, because like I said, I couldn't do much on my own. That's the funny thing about trust and the funny thing about community. It is often when you need it the most that you feel the least comfortable leaning into it. And like I said, I was truly so uncomfortable leaning into it. But when you're thrown into the pool, you either sink or you swim. Luckily, I swam. It's not because I didn't have a great support network. I did. In fact, I felt so loved in those moments, but that didn't help. I was being held so tight and with so much love, and yet I felt like I was in free fall. I wasn't sure how that was possible. You see the people around you and they love you so much and you know it, but sometimes it feels as though you are, like I said, alone. Then, eventually, like I said, time passed. I'm not sure how I got over things, but I did. I learned what worked for me and I moved on. By about month seven or eight, I would have told you I nailed the whole trust thing and I knew exactly what I needed to get to where I wanted to be. As more time passed, I eventually played again. I was as happy as a clam and I was on top of the world. And then it happened again. The same knee, the same sound, the same feeling of helplessness. Now, you would think, given the fact that I had just done this before, I would know what to do. I would know the tools I needed to be successful and I would know how to avoid that loneliness that really filled my heart. Unfortunately, that's not how the story unfolded, or it is still currently unfolding. Rehab is like a roller coaster and you never know when the ups and downs are going to come. The hardest thing about that for someone like me is I'm truly a perfectionist. I wanted to be able to conquer this rehab knowing that I had an experiment beforehand and I was going to proceed like a star. That's also not what happened, unfortunately. I learned to lean on my teammates, I learned to ask for help, and I eventually made it through. Like I said, things happen un unexpectedly and you never know what's going to be around the corner, just like a roller coaster. But I have learned, and I'm very proud to say, that I've realized that both community and trust are definitions that are malleable. They change over time and you never really know when you're going to need them. But if you offer yourself the grace and the time to move with those changes rather than holding firmly to the definitions you thought that you knew, everything will be okay and the roller coaster does end eventually. Thank you.